Boom. And we are live, and I am joined by Leslie Varner Jr. from Texas RGV. My man, thank you so much for giving me your time. I'm a huge fan of your game. I'm a fan of you as a person, so thank you for giving me your time of your busy day. All right, yeah, thank you for having me also. Yes, sir. Um, before we dive into everything that involves you, uh, your first team All-WAC selection, top 10 in the conference and scoring, before we get to know how you became that player, I want to know like your roots. How did you get started? So you played high school basketball, Cedar Hill High School in Texas. Let's start there. Because it's so easy to to jump into the amazing player that you are today. I want to know how you became that player. So when you were in high school, were you were you always that small forward? What was your role? Were you a point guard? Were you a big? Were you tall early? What was your position like when you were in high school? Yeah, okay. Growing up, I like I tell people all the time, like at this point in time in my life, I done played every position. <laughs> growing up, like I remember when I was in middle school, I was the tallest. I was the tallest one on the team, so I started off playing the five. And then as we kind of got to, like, the eighth grade, ninth grade year, I became the four because I was tall, but I wasn't always the tallest one. And then when I transferred to AAA Academy, I played the three because we had some other taller guys. And, and then I could shoot really well, so I played on the perimeter shooting. And then I remember I went to CYM Academy for my junior year, and he had me playing the one because we had a lot of, like, foreigners, and they were, like, really big, seven-footers, 6'10", and I was 6'6". So I played the one. And then when I came to Cedar Hill, I played the five and a little bit of the two. And when I went to Rio Grande Valley, the coach just told me, like, you know, just get in, just be a player. It don't matter where you play at, just continue to play. And they bring something to the game when you're on the court. So I just played the four and the three and the two while I was there, interchangeable. And that's just how I got for that. I think that's really helped you in like in your game because now you watch your game now, it's like, man, you're so versatile, both offensively and defensively. You can handle, you can run in transition, you can hit the three, but yet you can guard the bigs, you move your feet really well. Uh, so I think that really helped your development. Like I know they always talk about how Anthony Davis was a point guard when he was in high school. So now when you see yeah. him like as a big, you're like, man, Anthony Davis has a handle on him for a big. So I think that yeah. really helped that really helped your game and really pushed it forward. So when – what was it like? What year was it when you're like, oh man, like I'm good? Like, the, okay, this is something that I could really pursue for a career. Was it your junior year, your sophomore year, your senior year? What was that for you? I would say it was my junior year. I, I got to be able to be the second leading scorer on the team, and that's what kind of opened my eyes to, wow, like I could take this to another level my right. senior year, and that's what I did. Right. Now, what made you choose Texas, Texas RGV? So I'm, I'm sure you obviously had options and opportunities. What made you, was it just the fit because you're more comfortable in being in Texas? What was it for you? For me, I just felt like it was the fit. I, I, I liked it being in Texas, even though it was like on the border of Mexico and things, but just I just trusted the coaching staff. I thought I took my visit and just felt like that was the best place for me to be. Right. Now, I think there's a huge... Um, a huge benefit of having a chip on your shoulder. Like for me, obviously I was never the player that you were or that you are. Um, but I was always overlooked when I did play. And so I, like, I always had to outwork everyone. I, I, I'm not jumping out of the gym. I'm not six, eight. Uh, I'm six, two. I have a little bit of a quick first step. I have a shot, but I always had to outwork people. So I'd show up to practice before everybody and I would leave after everybody. And I feel like I took what I learned from playing basketball and also I did MMA as well, but I took what I learned and I applied it to what I do now. And now I feel like I would have never have learned that lesson if I didn't have that chip on my shoulder and was overlooked. I've looked at your career and the progression you've made from your freshman year to your sophomore year to your junior year to your senior year. And the, the leaps and bounds of improvements you've made is not just from somebody who gets everything in life I could tell that you have that chip on your shoulder as well how much has that helped you to like okay I got to continue to prove myself has that really helped push your game forward yes it's helped put my game forward a lot just the chip is just growing over time honestly. right but just yeah just people telling me what I can and cannot do I just always want to prove somebody wrong or prove somebody right if they're in my corner saying what what they think I can do and that's just how I take it every day by day right now, this is such a strange time, Leslie, uh, with obviously 2020 has just been crazy. It started with Kobe yeah. Bryant's passing, and then you get the like the COVID-19, the weird NBA season. You have the election. Like, 2020 has just been a roller coaster. People forget we almost went into a World War III this year. Like, it's yeah. just the forest fires. 2020 has just been absurd. 
Um, and so I feel like the people who are able to adapt are the people who ultimately succeed the most. So for you, how have you benefited from this time? Because obviously at first it probably was really hard to get into gyms and then yeah. now, and you may not be able to scrimmage up and down, but now that things are getting a little bit more comfortable, um, how, how have things been from you, for you? Have you benefited from having that time? Were you able to focus in the gym a little bit more, maybe weight training? How did you benefit from this? I feel like I benefited a lot. Like early on, a lot of things in Dallas was closed, like when Corona first begun. But right. as like, I feel like the first month, after the first month of Corona, everything's kind of start becoming more open here in Dallas. So I, I've been able to just to haul in, whether it's the weight room, conditioning, or on the court. And that's just what I've been doing this whole quarantine. And I feel like quarantine has just helped me be more patient with things because everything has been so prolonged. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing I took out of Corona and quarantine, just being more patient with everything. Right. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, certainly it gives you a lot of opportunity to reflect, watch the tape, um, and see some things that you can improve on. So I'm a huge fan of your game from kind of what we talked about, the standpoint of your versatility. Like, I think you have a great opportunity every time you step on the court to make a difference, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. Um, For you, take me to your freshman year now. What kind of player were you your freshman year? Um, obviously, you're just getting into college. You're having to adjust to what the college game is like. Was that an easy adjustment for you? Did anything surprise you? What was your freshman year like? My freshman year, I say it was a little. It was a little surprising just because it was all new to me. I didn't go JUCO. I didn't red shirt or anything like that. Right. But I mean, it just the type of player I was my freshman year was just a defensive mindset type of guy, hustle, dirty type of guy, like dive on the ground, get the get the loose balls type of thing. I wasn't really looking to score or find my short my shot as often as I do like as I, when I was a junior and senior because we already had juniors and seniors on the team that did that so I kind of just wanted to get in the rotation any type of way I could so I just started to get on the floor by just hauling after everyone on the defensive end and diving on the ground playing hard right now not everyone wants to do that so I first want to acknowledge that because a lot of people when they get to um not even just college level, high school level, people have egos. And it's like, man, no, I want to, I'm not playing defense. So the fact that you were able to like own up, like, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, mm. That's impressive to me. Now your sophomore year. So now we got your freshman year, you're coming in, you're adjusting to the college game. Uh, like you said, you're a, de- a defender, you're going in, you're making those hustle plays. Take me your sophomore year. What player was Leslie your sophomore year compared to your freshman year? I kept that same mindset of getting after the defensive end and just getting more transition buckets and letting my offense come to me on the defensive side or getting steals and getting out and getting in leak outs and stuff like that. But I was more of a, like a spot up shooter, like, cause the coach knew I could always shoot. So I just took on of a bigger role of knocking down that, that uh, open three or open mid range one to pull up. If it's, if it's for me at that time. Okay. Now your junior year, this is where you're, I think you're starting to really start to blossom. Like, okay, now you're, you're at first I feel like, okay, yeah, you're a defender. Okay. Now we're getting that three and D you're hitting the three. Now your junior year, is that where that next layer starts to come in? Yeah, it definitely came in my junior. I took a big leap in scoring. I was the second leading scorer on the team. The uh, first rebounding, uh, leading rebounder on the team for two years straight my junior and senior year. And my junior year, I just I, I started to just fill out more. I started to look for my shot more because I was the second option on the team. So I scored in a variety of ways between shooting threes, shooting my, getting to my pull-ups. And that's what – mainly my junior year, I was shooting threes, pull-ups, and, and always just keeping at it on the defensive end. Right. And now your senior year is the year that – this is the year I wanted to get into. So like I said, first team mm-hmm. all WAC selection, top 10 in scoring in your conference. Those are – that's big time. Like that's not just something yeah. that people do. Um, so what strides were you able to make? What are, what are some things that you're like, okay, this is what I need to get to. Cause now the NBA is a legitimate thing for you. Like, Hey, I, I'm trying to make the league. So when you sat down with your coach, maybe, or is it sitting down with a mentor? When you looked at the tape, what are some things that you wanted to focus on to better prepare you for that next level going from your junior year to your senior year? Yeah, just after my junior year, I remember sitting down with my head coach, Coach Lou Hill, and him telling me like, okay, man, you know, you had a good junior year, but next year is going to be your team. So you got to haul in on this off season and make sure you got your game in order because you're going to have to lead these guys day in and day out. So I just made sure my junior summer, I worked just relentlessly day and night on my off season when I came back to Dallas. And it just showed like I just 
made sure I was just consistent was the main thing. I just wanted to be more consistent on like just not having any off games because I knew if I had an off game, it was going to be tough for us to win. Right. So I just made sure my consistency was there just on an everyday basis and my team could depend on me. Well, talk about consistency. You had nine games with 20 or more points. You had a 32-point game against GCU, five or six from three. That's one of the things that stand out to me. So, like, I'm looking at your statistics, and it's like, man, you're averaging, like, 16 points per game, six rebounds, shooting efficiently. But it, this is the one that stands out to me, and I think this is the one that really attracts a lot of NBA scouts and a lot of people is, so you have the length, you have the athleticism, you have the defense, you're good in transition, but you're shooting 87% from the free throw line, and you're shooting a 40% clip from three. Like, that's elite-level yeah. stuff. That's that 3 and D type of guy that – now I feel like the stock for 3 and D guys in the NBA is higher than it's ever been. Like everyone wants that small forward who can do a little bit of everything and hit the three. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's what also separates you in the eyes of NBA scouts or the eye of just going into the next level? Do you feel like that will really benefit um, and progress your career? Yeah, I think that'll benefit me a lot because I feel like a lot of teams want a guy that's six eight and that can stretch the floor and right. play on the perimeter and get after it on the defensive end also. Right, exactly. So I'm going to transition into this. So what kind of impact would you see yourself having? So um, I think you're an NBA player. I really do. I'm not just saying that because I'm interviewing you. I truly do that. I watched the film. Like I told you, I was on uh, SUV TV with Rashad Phillips, Sports Talk 2319. And we're breaking down the whole live NBA draft coverage, all 60 guys. And man, I have my fingers crossed from you. And I still think you're going to make an NBA roster. And I'm like, you are an NBA player. Like, I truly believe that. If you were to get signed today, what is the type of impact you see yourself having? I feel like I could just bring a, a overall, other than off the court things, I feel like I could just bring an overall good vibe and a good feeling around the team and be a, a great team player. And then I just know I would the hustle and the, the playing hard and the energy will always be there every time I step on the court. And then I'll, I'll bring whatever the team needs offensively, whether it's shooting a three where there's getting to the rack, where there's getting to the free throw line, where there's getting somebody else open to pass on the ball because they're high. And I just feel like I help a team in a variety of ways. Yeah, you're a high character guy. And that's one thing we talked about too is in this draft, Leslie, we were there's no summer league. So we always yeah. kept talking about it that the upperclassmen, the more refined mm-hmm. players, the more polished players are going to be more NBA ready because you don't have that summer league to prepare for. So um, you on an NBA roster, I think you have an impact immediately just because of the experience. And like you said, just you're a very high character guy. And I think that's something that a lot of teams care about. And that's something that doesn't show up on a stat sheet. You're not going to say, sure. oh, high character guy, X amount of points. But that's something that truly matters in the locker room and for your team. Um, so what is so your journey now? What is your journey looking like? It's just training. It's just grinding every single day. Yeah, really just training and grinding every single day, just waiting on my time to come, really waiting on that call. Right. Now, someone listening to this podcast, um, let's say they just never seen you play, they're on the other side of the world or whatever the case may be, and they're like, okay, I like this Les- uh, Leslie Varner guy. I think he's a good dude. And they've never seen you play before. How would you describe Leslie Varner Jr.'s game to someone who's never seen you play? Yeah, I would say uh, he's going to just play hard. Uh, whenever he's on the court, and he's a he's a great three point shooter, uh, a great three point shooter and mid range shooter. He can score in a variety of ways. He can score in the ISO. He can get to the rack. He can get his teammates open, and he rebounds well for his size. And yeah, that's that'd be the main points I tell him. Sounds like great points to me. Uh, <laughs> so okay, the NBA season typically is eighty two games, and so mm-hmm. for a college player, it's like man, that's a lot of games. That's a that's a huge adjustment. Now, obviously, given the circumstances, we have the bubble. Um, and now it just got reduced to 72 games. Um, but with the numbers spiking, there may be one month where it gets suspended and we have to just wait for the numbers to die down. It, it's just kind of yeah. in a flux. No one really knows the answers to these situations because of what's going on in the world. Is that something that you think your body is prepared for? Because, I mean, that is a huge adjustment to – but I like to your point, I know you said you've been putting on a lot of muscle and just grinding during mm-hmm. quarantine. Is that something you think you're prepared for? Because that is a pretty big adjustment. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm – I'm pretty prepared for it but i feel like it'll, it'll still be a little adjustment to me but i feel like I, right. for the most part i'll be prepared for it because it's just what i've been working for this whole off season through the cold quarantine right okay so i've done nba comparisons uh to rap artists i've done nba comparisons to marvel characters to dc characters yeah. um i just love doing comparisons and bringing worlds together 
So I have LeBron as Wayne, Curry as Drake. That's some of them. Meek Mills, Russell Westbrook. I think I did Uzi and Kyrie Irving. So I've done a lot of them. I've done as many as I possibly can. Um, yeah. Who would be Leslie's rap comparison? I think Leslie's rap comparison would be probably Lil Durk. Okay, Lil Durk. Yeah, Lil Durk. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Just because I can relate to the things he's saying in his rap songs, and uh, although I like his music and his beats and the way his flow is, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, do you have a go-to playlist? Now I'm curious. Do you, like before games, is there is there someone that you listen to the most? Is it Lil Durk? Uh, but it depends really on the vibe, but like how I'm feeling at the time. But I probably wouldn't listen to Dirk probably right walking into the gym. Probably okay. When I wake up, I'll listen to Dirk. But right walking into the gym, I'll probably listen to like, probably listen to somebody like Moneybag or some Moneybag Yo or something. You can't like go that. wrong Just with Moneybag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot go wrong with Moneybag. Uh, Me versus Me, I think is my favorite Moneybag song. That one, yeah. that one gets me going every single time. Yeah. Man, Leslie, uh, I am extremely honored to have you on my podcast i know you're a busy guy you got workouts this is a huge part of your life an important time in your life so to give me just 15 minutes of your time i'm extremely appreciative of that so thank you for coming on my show um where can people find you instagram twitter because i know social media runs everything these days so where can people find you yeah my twitter is at varner louie l-o-u-i-e and my instagram is at leslie varner i i for the second leslie Thank you again for coming on my show. I appreciate it. You're welcome anytime you want. Um, my fingers are crossed from you, but I know you're putting in the work. I don't need to do that. So I'll be uh, watching every every game you have, and uh, I'll be supporting you along the whole way. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. He does it all. Interviews. Let's talk about some basketball.